This is Paul Gordon of iState.tv, and this is your iGun Daily Report for Monday, November 13th, 2017. On this iGun Report, we talk about increasingly low standards to justify confiscating guns and how one county in Washington state plans on becoming a new test model for gun confiscation strategies around the country. King County Council members have taken to using a federal law that requires individuals who have served, who have been served with a domestic protection order to turn in their firearms to the local police in their area. And what they plan on doing is combing through their database of domestic abusers who have not turned in their guns and developing a strategy to go out and seize their guns. To that end, The council members have earmarked $600,000 to fund the program that will be required to go out to these alleged domestic abusers' homes and confiscate their guns. This one, of course, is an easy one to get the public to support. And don't forget to check out the article this report is based on at iState.tv. And if you're watching YouTube, the link will appear in the the right-hand corner of this video. (laughs) Ha ha! And if you're watching this on Facebook, it'll be in the description above. So, what we have here is, well, I'm going to spell it out for you. These moves by the King County Council members, to me, are basically, it's a test model for other gun grabbers to study. How successful will they be in confiscating guns? How much will it cost to collect some said number of guns? How does the community react to armed government agents knocking on doors to take guns from people who have been convicted of no crime and thus they haven't faced due process before their fundamental rights are violated? The precedent set by civil asset forfeiture, I believe, and uh, that's what's at play here. The, the, and and the precedent, precedent that it set is that the state should have the power to seize your property and limit your rights based solely on the fear that you might engage in criminal activity. And this is, this is why such things as gun confiscation from people merely being accused of being domestic abusers is a is a perfectly reasonable use of state power against its own citizens. And sadly, I, I, I doubt very much that the citizens of King County will will see much wrong with stopping dangerous men. And and I'm sure that's what most people imagine when they think of domestic abusers. Uh, and and so so you picture these dangerous men and yeah you you the idea of 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 preventing them from having the tools to do bad things to helpless women this is the image that they're building in your head it's the perfect victimhood scenario to nudge people towards the false choice of surrendering more liberty in exchange for more security so the best scenario to this is this to encourage more people to be armed, to be trained, to be reasonable gun owners. One thing almost all real domestic abusers have in common is this. They like to target people who can effectively fight back. A woman with a gun who knows how to use it, that's not the type of target that most of these domestic abusers want to go after. King County council members aren't interested in actually helping women under threat from dangerous men. Rather, they're interested in exploiting a genuine fear to nudge people towards an acceptance of a more powerful state that controls citizens that are increasingly weakened to resist the abuse the state has in the pipeline for the not-so-distant future. My name is Paul Gordon, and this has been your iGun Daily Report from iState.tv.
Be sure you like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash iStateTV and select See First in your news feed under the follow tab. And if you're watching on YouTube, be sure you subscribe to us at youtube.com slash iState. Hit that big red subscribe button and be sure to hit the bell right next to it to get daily notifications when we post new videos.